Rule H1. It is important that all road users are aware of the highway code, are considerate to other road users and understand their responsibility for the safety of others. Everyone suffers when road collisions occur, whether they are physically injured or not. But those in charge of vehicles that can cause the greatest harm in the event of a collision bear the greatest responsibility to take care and reduce the danger they pose to others. This principle applies most strongly to drivers of large goods and passenger vehicles, vans minibuses, cars taxis and motorcycles. Cyclists, horse riders and drivers of horse-drawn vehicles likewise have a responsibility to reduce danger to pedestrians. None of this detracts from the responsibility of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders, to have regard for their own and other road users' safety. Always remember that the people you encounter may have impaired sight, hearing or mobility and that this may not be obvious. Rule H2, Rule for Drivers, Motorcyclists, Horse-Drawn Vehicles, Horse Riders and Cyclists At a junction you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which or from which you are turning. You must give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing, and to pedestrians and cyclists on a parallel crossing, see Rule 195. Pedestrians have priority when on a zebra crossing, on a parallel crossing or at light controlled crossings when they have a green signal. You should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross a zebra crossing, and to pedestrians and cyclists waiting to cross a parallel crossing. Horse riders should also give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing, and to pedestrians and cyclists on a parallel crossing. Cyclists should give way to pedestrians on shared use cycle tracks and to horse riders on bridleways. Only pedestrians may use the pavement. Pedestrians include wheelchair and mobility scooter users. Pedestrians may use any part of the road and use cycle tracks as well as the pavement, unless there are signs prohibiting pedestrians. Rule H3, Rule for Drivers and Motorcyclists You should not cut across cyclists, horse riders or horse-drawn vehicles going ahead when you are turning into or out of a junction or changing direction or lane just as you would not turn across the path of another motor vehicle. This applies whether they are using a cycle lane, a cycle track, or riding ahead on the road and you should give way to them. Do not turn at a junction if to do so would cause the cyclist, horse rider or horse-drawn vehicle going straight ahead to stop or swerve. You should stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. This includes when cyclists are approaching, passing or moving off from a junction moving past or waiting alongside stationary or slow moving traffic traveling around a roundabout rule 1 pavements and footways including any path along the side of a road should be used if provided where possible avoid being next to the curb with your back to the traffic if you have to step into the road look both ways first always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions always show due care and consideration for others rule 2 if there is no pavement, keep to the right-hand side of the road so that you can see oncoming traffic. You should take extra care and be prepared to walk in single file, especially on narrow roads or in poor light. Keep close to the side of the road. Rule 3. Help other road users to see you. Wear or carry something light-colored, bright or fluorescent in poor daylight conditions. When it is dark, use reflective materials, e.g. armbands, sashes, waistcoats, jackets, footwear which can be seen by drivers using headlights up to three times as far away as non-reflective materials. Rule 4. Young children should not be out alone on the pavement or road, see Rule 7. When taking children out, keep between them and the traffic and hold their hands firmly. Strap very young children into push chairs or use reins. When pushing a young child in a buggy, do not push the buggy into the road when checking to see if it is clear to cross, particularly from between parked vehicles. Rule 5. Organized walks or parades involving large groups of people walking along a road should use a pavement if available, if one is not available, they should keep to the left. Lookouts should be positioned at the front and back of the group, and they should wear fluorescent clothes in daylight and reflective clothes in the dark. At night, the lookout in front should show a white line and the one at the back a red light. People on the outside of large groups should also carry lights and wear reflective clothing. Rule 6. Motorways. Pedestrians must not be on motorways or slip roads except in an emergency, see Rules 272 and 277. Rule 7. The Green Cross Code. The advice given below on crossing the road is for all pedestrians. Children should be taught the code and should not be allowed out alone until they can understand and use it properly. The age when they can do this is different for each child. Many children cannot judge how fast vehicles are going or how far away they are. Children learn by example 
so parents and carers should always use the code in full when out with their children. They are responsible for deciding at what age children can use it safely by themselves. A first find a safe place to cross and where there is space to reach the pavement on the other side. Where there is a crossing nearby, use it. It is safer to cross using a subway, a footbridge, an island, a zebra, pelican, toucan or puffin crossing, or where there is a crossing point controlled by a police officer, a school crossing patrol or a traffic warden. Otherwise choose a place where you can see clearly in all directions. Try to avoid crossing between parked cars, see rule 14, on a blind bend, or close to the brow of a hill. Move to a space where drivers and riders can see you clearly. Do not cross the road diagonally. Relate. At a junction. When you are crossing or waiting to cross the road, other traffic should give way. Look out for traffic turning into the road, especially from behind you, and cross at a place where drivers can see you. If you have started crossing and traffic wants to turn into the road, you have priority and they should give way. See rules H2 and 170. Rule 9. Pedestrian safety barriers. Where there are barriers, cross the road only at the gaps provided for pedestrians. Do not climb over the barriers or walk between them and the road. Rule 10. Dactyl paving. Raised surfaces that can be felt underfoot provide warning and guidance to blind or partially sighted people. The most common surfaces are a series of raised studs, which are used at crossing points with a dropped curb, or a series of rounded raised bars which are used at level crossings, at the top and bottom of steps and at some other hazards. Rule 11. One-way streets. Check which way the traffic is moving. Do not cross until it is safe to do so without stopping. Bus and cycle lanes may operate in the opposite direction to the rest of the traffic. Rule 12. Bus and cycle lanes. Take care when crossing these lanes as traffic may be moving faster than in the other lanes, or against the flow of traffic. Rule 13. Routes shared with cyclists. Cycle tracks may run alongside footpaths or pavements and be separated from them by a feature such as a change of material, a verge, a curb or a white line. Such routes may also incorporate short lengths of tactile paving to help visually impaired people stay on the correct side. On the pedestrian side this may comprise a series of flat-topped bars running across the direction of travel, ladder pattern. On the cyclist side the same bars are orientated in the direction of travel, tramline pattern. Some routes shared with cyclists will not be separated by such a feature allowing cyclists and pedestrians to share the same space. Cyclists should respect your safety, see Rule 62, but you should also take care not to obstruct or endanger them. Always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Where signs indicate, some routes are shared between pedestrians, cyclists, horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles. Cyclists, horse riders and drivers of horse-drawn vehicles should respect your safety, but you should take care not to obstruct or endanger them. Always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Rule 14. Parked Vehicles. If you have to cross between parked vehicles, use the outside edges of the vehicles as if they were the curb. Stop there and make sure you can see all around and that the traffic can see you. Make sure there is a gap between any parked vehicles on the other side, so you can reach the pavement. Never cross the road in front of, or behind, any vehicle with its engine running, especially a large vehicle, as the driver may not be able to see you. Rule 15. Reversing Vehicles. Never cross behind a vehicle which is reversing, showing white reversing lights or sounding a warning. Rule 16. Moving vehicles. You must not get onto or hold onto a moving vehicle. Rule 17. At night. Wear something reflective to make it easier for others to see you. See Rule 3. If there is no pedestrian crossing nearby, cross the road near a street light so that traffic can see you more easily. Rule 18. At all crossings. When using any type of crossing you should. Always check that the traffic has stopped before you start to cross or push a pram onto a crossing. Always cross between the studs or over the zebra markings. Do not cross at the side of the crossing or on the zigzag lines, as it can be dangerous. Rule 19. Zebra crossings. Give traffic plenty of time to see you and to stop before you start to cross. Vehicles will need more time when the road is slippery. Wait until traffic has stopped from both directions or the road is clear before crossing. Remember that traffic does not have to stop until someone has moved onto the crossing. Drivers and riders should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross and must give way to pedestrians on a zebra crossing, see rule H2. Keep looking both ways, and listening, in case a driver or rider has not seen you and attempts to overtake a vehicle that has stopped. Rule 20. 
where there is an island in the middle of a zebra crossing, wait on the island and follow rule 19 before you cross the second half of the road, it is a separate crossing. Rule 21. At traffic lights, there may be special signals for pedestrians. You should only start to cross the road when the green figure shows. If you have started to cross the road and the green figure goes out, you should still have time to reach the other side, but do not delay. If no pedestrian signals have been provided, watch carefully and do not cross until the traffic lights are red and the traffic has stopped. Keep looking and check for traffic that may be turning the corner. Remember that traffic lights may let traffic move in some lanes while traffic in other lanes has stopped. Rule 22. Pelican crossings. These are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push the control button to activate the traffic signals. When the red figure shows, do not cross. When a steady green figure shows, check the traffic has stopped then cross with care. When the green figure begins to flash you should not start to cross. If you have already started you should have time to finish crossing safely. Rule 23. Puffin crossings differ from pelican crossings as the red and green figures are above the control box on your side of the road and there is no flashing green figure phase. Press the button and wait for the green figure to show. Rule 24. When the road is congested, traffic on your side of the road may be forced to stop even though their lights are green. Traffic may still be moving on the other side of the road, so press the button and wait for the signal to cross. Rule 25. Toucan crossings are light controlled crossings which allow cyclists and pedestrians to share crossing space and cross at the same time. They are push button operated. Pedestrians and cyclists will see the green signal together. Cyclists are permitted to ride across. Rule 26. At some crossings there is a bleeping sound or voice signal to indicate to blind or partially sighted people when the steady green figure is showing, and there may be a tactile signal to help deaf blind people. Rule 27. Equestrian crossings are for horse riders. They have pavement barriers, wider crossing spaces, horse and rider figures and light panels and either two sets of controls, one higher, or just one higher control panel. Rule 28. Staggered pelican or puffin crossings. When the crossings on each side of the central refuge are not in line they are two separate crossings. On reaching the central island, press the button again and wait for a steady green figure. Rule 29. Crossings controlled by an authorized person. Do not cross the road unless you are signaled to do so by a police officer, traffic warden or school crossing patrol. Always cross in front of them. Rule 30. Where there are no controlled crossing points available it is advisable to cross where there is an island in the middle of the road. Use the green cross code, see rule 7, to cross to the island and then stop and use it again to cross the second half of the road. Rule 31. Emergency vehicles. If an ambulance, fire engine, police or other emergency vehicle approaches using flashing blue lights, headlights and or sirens, keep off the road. Rule 32. Buses. Get on or off a bus only when it has stopped to allow you to do so. Watch out for cyclists when you are getting off. Never cross the road directly behind or in front of a bus. Wait until it has moved off and you can see clearly in both directions. Rule 33. Tramways. These may run through pedestrian areas. Their path will be marked out by shallow curbs, changes in the paving or other road surface, white lines or yellow dots. Cross at designated crossings where provided. Elsewhere treat trams as you would other road vehicles and look both ways along the track before crossing. Do not walk along the track as trams may come up behind you. Trams move quietly and cannot steer to avoid you. Rule 34. Railway level crossings. You must not cross or pass a stop line when the red lights show, including a red pedestrian figure. Also do not cross if an alarm is sounding or the barriers are being lowered. The tone of the alarm may change if another train is approaching. If there are no lights, alarms or barriers, stop, look both ways and listen before crossing. A tactile surface comprising rounded bars running across the direction of pedestrian travel may be installed on the footpath approaching a level crossing to warn visually impaired people of its presence. The tactile surface should extend across the full width of the footway and should be located at an appropriate distance from the barrier or projected line of the barrier. Rule 35. Street and pavement repairs. A pavement may be closed temporarily because it is not safe to use. Take extra care if you are directed to walk in or to cross the road. Rule 36. There is one class of manual wheelchair, called a class 1 invalid carriage, and two classes of powered wheelchairs and powered mobility scooters. Manual wheelchairs and class 2 vehicles are those with an upper speed limit of 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour, and are designed to be used on pavements. 
Class 3 vehicles are those with an upper speed limit of 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour, and are equipped to be used on the road as well as the pavement. Rule 37. When you are on the road you should obey the guidance and rules for other vehicles, when on the pavement you should follow the guidance and rules for pedestrians. Rule 38. Pavements are safer than roads and should be used when available. You should give pedestrians priority and show consideration for other pavement users, particularly those with a hearing or visual impairment who may not be aware that you are there. Rule 39. Powered wheelchairs and scooters must not travel faster than 4 miles per hour, 6 kilometers per hour, on pavements or in pedestrian areas. You may need to reduce your speed to adjust to other pavement users who may not be able to move out of your way quickly enough or where the pavement is too narrow. Rule 40. When moving off the pavement onto the road, you should take special care. Before moving off, always look round and make sure it's safe to join the traffic. Always try to use dropped curbs when moving off the pavement, even if this means traveling further to locate one. If you have to climb or descend a curb, always approach it at right angles and don't try to negotiate a curb higher than the vehicle manufacturer's recommendations. Rule 41. You should take care when traveling on the road as you may be traveling more slowly than other traffic. Your machine is restricted to 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour, and may be less visible. Rule 42. When on the road, Class 3 vehicles should travel in the direction of the traffic. Class 2 users should always use the pavement when it is available. When there is no pavement, you should use caution when on the road. Class 2 users should, where possible, travel in the direction of the traffic. If you are traveling at night when lights must be used, you should travel in the direction of the traffic to avoid confusing other road users. Rule 43. You must follow the same rules about using lights, indicators and horns as for other road vehicles, if your vehicle is fitted with them. At night, lights must be used. Be aware that other road users may not see you and you should make yourself more visible, even in the daytime and also at dusk, by, for instance, wearing a reflective jacket or reflective strips on the back of the vehicle. Rule 44. Take extra care at road junctions. When going straight ahead, check to make sure there are no vehicles about to cross your path from the left, the right, or overtaking you and turning left. There are several options for dealing with right turns, especially turning from a major road. If moving into the middle of the road is difficult or dangerous, you can stop on the left-hand side of the road and wait for a safe gap in the traffic. Negotiate the turn as a pedestrian i.e. travel along the pavement and cross the road between pavements where it is safe to do so. Class 3 users should switch the vehicle to the lower speed limit when on pavements. Rule 45. All normal parking restrictions should be observed. Your vehicle should not be left unattended if it causes an obstruction to other pedestrians, especially those in wheelchairs. Parking concessions provided under the blue badge scheme, see further reading, will apply to those vehicles displaying a valid badge. Rule 46. These vehicles must not be used on motorways, see Rule 253. They should not be used on unrestricted dual carriageways where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour, but if they are used on these dual carriageways, they must have a flashing amber beacon. A flashing amber beacon should be used on all other dual carriageways, see Rule 220. Rule 47. Horse-drawn vehicles used on the highway should be operated and maintained in accordance with standards set out in the Department for Transport's Code of Practice for Horse-Drawn Vehicles. This code lays down the requirements for a road driving assessment and includes a comprehensive list of safety checks to ensure that a carriage and its fittings are safe and in good working order. The standards set out in the road driving assessment may be required to be met by a local authority if an operator wishes to obtain a local authority license to operate a passenger carrying service. Rule 48. Safety Equipment and Clothing All horse-drawn vehicles should have two red rear reflectors. It is safer not to drive at night but if you do, a light showing white to the front and red to the rear must be fitted. Rule 49 Safety Equipment Children under the age of 14 must wear a helmet which complies with the regulations. It must be fastened securely. Other riders should also follow these requirements. These requirements do not apply to a child who is a follower of the Sikh religion while wearing a turban. Rule 50. Other clothing. You should wear boots or shoes with hard soles and heels. Light colored or fluorescent clothing in daylight. Reflective clothing if you have to ride at night or in poor visibility. Rule 51. At night. It is safer not to ride on the road at night or in poor visibility, but if you do, 
Make sure you wear reflective clothing and your horse has reflective bands above the fetlock joints. A light which shows white to the front and red to the rear should be fitted, with a band, to the rider's right arm and or leg slash riding boot. If you are leading a horse at night, carry a light in your right hand, showing white to the front and red to the rear, and wear reflective clothing on both you and your horse. It is strongly recommended that a fluorescent slash reflective tail guard is also worn by your horse. Rule 52 Before you take a horse or horse-drawn vehicle onto the road, you should Ensure all tack fits well and is in good condition. Make sure you can control the horse. Rule 53 Before riding off or turning, look behind you to make sure it is safe, then give a clear arm signal. When riding on the road, you should Keep to the left Keep both hands on the reins unless you are signaling. Keep both feet in the stirrups. Not carry another person. Not carry anything which might affect your balance or get tangled up with the reins. Keep a horse you are leading to your left. Move in the direction of the traffic flow in a one-way street. Never ride more than two abreast, and ride in single file on narrow or busy roads and when riding round bends. Rule 54. You must not take a horse onto a footpath or pavement and you should not take a horse onto a cycle track. Use a bridleway where possible. Equestrian crossings may be provided for horse riders to cross the road and you should use these where available, see Rule 27. You should dismount at level crossings where horse rider dismount sign is displayed. Rule 55. Avoid roundabouts wherever possible. If you use them, you should. Keep to the left and watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout. Signal right when riding across exits to show you are not leaving. Signal left just before you leave the roundabout. Rule 56. Dogs. Do not let a dog out on the road on its own. Keep it on a short lead when walking on the pavement, road or path shared with cyclists or horse riders. Rule 57. When in a vehicle make sure dogs or other animals are suitably restrained so they cannot distract you while you are driving or injure you, or themselves, if you stop quickly. A seatbelt harness pet carrier, dog cage or dog guard are ways of restraining animals in cars. Rule 58. Animals being herded. These should be kept under control at all times. You should, if possible, send another person along the road in front to warn other road users, especially at a bend or the brow of a hill. It is safer not to move animals after dark, but if you do, then wear reflective clothing and ensure that lights are carried, white at the front and red at the rear of the herd. Rule 59. Clothing. You should avoid clothes that may get tangled in the chain, or in a wheel or may obscure your lights when you are cycling. Light-colored or fluorescent clothing can help other road users to see you in daylight and poor light, while reflective clothing and or accessories, belt, arm or ankle bands, can increase your visibility in the dark. You should wear a cycle helmet that conforms to current regulations, is the correct size and securely fastened. Evidence suggests that a correctly fitted helmet will reduce your risk of sustaining a head injury in certain circumstances. Rule 60. At night your cycle must have white front and red rear lights lit. It must also be fitted with a red rear reflector, and amber pedal reflectors, if manufactured after January 10, 1985. White front reflectors and spoke reflectors will also help you to be seen. Flashing lights are permitted but it is recommended that cyclists who are riding in areas without street lighting use a steady front lamp. Rule 61. Cycle routes and other facilities. Cycle lanes are marked by a white line which may be broken, along the carriageway, see Rule 140. Use facilities such as cycle lanes and tracks, advanced stop lines and toucan crossings, see Rules 62 and 73, where they make your journey safer and easier. This will depend on your experience and skills in the situation at the time. While such facilities are provided for reasons of safety, cyclists may exercise their judgment and are not obliged to use them. Rule 62. Cycle Tracks. These are routes for cyclists that are physically protected or located away from motor traffic, other than where they cross side roads, see Rule 206. Cycle tracks may run alongside footpaths or pavements and be separated by a feature such as a change of material, a verge, a curb or a white line. You must keep to the side intended for cyclists as the pedestrian side remains a pavement or footpath. Some cycle tracks shared with pedestrians will not be separated by such a feature. On such shared use routes, you should always take care when passing pedestrians, especially children, older or disabled people, and allow them plenty of room. Always be prepared to slow down and stop if necessary, see Rule H2. Rule 63. Sharing space with pedestrians, horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles. 
When riding in places where sharing with pedestrians, horse riders or horse-drawn vehicles is permitted, take care when passing pedestrians and horse riders, especially children, older adults or disabled people. Slow down when necessary and let them know you are there, for example, by ringing your bell. It is recommended that a bell is fitted to your bike, or by calling out politely. Remember that pedestrians may be deaf, blind or partially sighted and that this may not be obvious. Do not pass pedestrians, horse riders or horse-drawn vehicles closely or at high speed, particularly from behind. You should not pass a horse on their left. Remember that horses can be startled if passed without warning. Always be prepared to slow down and stop when necessary. Rule 64. You must not cycle on a pavement. Rule 65. Bus lanes. Most bus lanes may be used by cyclists as indicated on signs. Watch out for people getting on or off a bus. Be very careful when overtaking a bus or leaving a bus lane as you will be entering a busier traffic flow. Do not pass between the curb and a bus when it is at a stop. Rule 66. You should. Avoid any actions that could reduce your control of your cycle. Be considerate of the needs of other road users when riding in groups. You can ride to abreast and it can be safer to do so, particularly in larger groups or when accompanying children or less experienced riders. Be aware of drivers behind you and allow them to overtake, for example, by moving into single file or stopping, when you feel it is safe to let them do so. Not ride close behind another vehicle in case it stops suddenly. Not carry anything which will affect your balance or may get tangled up with your wheels or chain. Be considerate of other road users, particularly blind and partially sighted pedestrians, and horse riders, see rule H1. Let them know you are there when necessary, for example, by calling out or ringing your bell if you have one. It is recommended that a bell be fitted. Rule 67. You should. Look all around to make sure it is safe before moving away from the curb, when pulling out to overtake or to pass stationary vehicles, or when turning at junctions or stopping. Watch out for obstructions in the road, such as drains, service covers and potholes, positioning yourself so you can move to the left, as well as to the right, to avoid them safely. Take care when passing parked vehicles, leaving enough room, a door's width or one meter, to avoid being hit if a car door is opened, and watch out for pedestrians stepping into your path. Be aware of traffic coming up behind you, including other cyclists, and give a clear signal to show other road users what you intend to do see signals to other road users. Take extra care near road humps, narrowings and other traffic calming features. When cycling on the road, only pass to the left of large vehicles when they are stationary or slow moving and you should proceed with caution as the driver may not be able to see you. Be particularly careful on the approach to junctions or where a large vehicle could change lanes to the left. Rule 68. You must not carry a passenger unless your cycle has been built or adapted to carry one. Hold onto a moving vehicle or trailer. Ride in a dangerous, careless or inconsiderate manner. Ride when under the influence of drink or drugs, including medicine. Rule 69. You must obey all traffic signs and traffic light signals. Rule 70. When parking your cycle. Find a conspicuous location where it can be seen by passers-by. Use cycle stands or other cycle parking facilities wherever possible. Do not leave it where it would cause an obstruction or hazard to other road users. Secure it well so that it will not fall over and become an obstruction or hazard. Rule 71. At traffic light junctions and at cycle only crossings with traffic lights, you must not cross the stop line when the traffic lights are red. Some junctions have an advanced stop line to enable you to position yourself ahead of other traffic and wait. See Rule 178. When the traffic lights are red, you may cross the first stop line, but you must not cross the final stop line. Rule 72. Road Positioning. When riding on the roads, there are two basic road positions you should adopt, depending on the situation. 1. Ride in the center of your lane, to make yourself as clearly visible as possible, in the following situations. On quiet roads or streets, if a faster vehicle comes up behind you, move to the left to enable them to overtake, if you can do so safely. In slower moving traffic, when the traffic around you starts to flow more freely, move over to the left if you can do so safely so the faster vehicles behind you can overtake. At the approach to junctions or road narrowings where it would be unsafe for drivers to overtake you. Rule 73. Junctions. Some junctions, particularly those with traffic lights, have special cycle facilities, including small cycle traffic lights at eye level height, which may allow you to move across separately from or ahead of other traffic. 
Use these facilities where they make your journey safer and easier. At junctions with no separate cyclist facilities, it is recommended that you proceed as if you were driving a motor vehicle, see rules 170 to 190. Position yourself in the center of your chosen lane, where you feel able to do this safely, to make yourself as visible as possible and to avoid being overtaken where this would be dangerous. If you do not feel safe to proceed in this way, you may prefer to dismount and wheel your bike across the junction. Rule 74. Turning. When approaching a junction on the left, watch out for vehicles turning in front of you, out of or into the side road. If you intend to turn left, check first for other cyclists or motorcyclists before signaling. Do not ride on the inside of vehicles signaling or slowing down to turn left. If you are turning right, check the traffic to ensure it is safe, then signal and move to the center of the road. Wait until there is a safe gap in the oncoming traffic and give a final look before completing the turn. It may be safer to wait on the left until there is a safe gap or to dismount and push your cycle across the road. When turning into or out of a side road, you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross, see Rule H2. Rule 75. Two-stage turns. At some signal-controlled junctions there may be signs and markings informing cyclists to turn right in two stages. Stage 1. When the traffic lights turn green, cyclists wishing to make the turn should go straight ahead to the location marked by a cycle symbol and turn arrow on the carriageway, then stop and wait there. Stage 2. When the traffic lights on the far side of the junction, now facing the cyclists, turn green, they should then complete the maneuver. Rule 76. Going straight ahead. If you are going straight ahead at a junction, you have priority over traffic waiting to turn into or out of the side road, unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise, see Rule H3. Check that you can proceed safely, particularly when approaching junctions on the left alongside stationary or slow-moving traffic. Watch out for drivers intending to turn across your path. Remember the driver ahead may not be able to see you, so bear in mind your speed and position in the road. Take great care when deciding whether it is safe to pass stationary or slow-moving lorries and other long vehicles, especially at the approach to junctions, as their drivers may not be able to see you. Remember that they may have to move over to the right before turning left, and that their rear wheels may then come very close to the curb while turning, see Rule 67. Rule 77. Busy Roads. When crossing faster or busy main roads, you may find it safer and easier to dismount and push your cycle across. Wait for a safe gap in the traffic before doing so, especially on faster roads and dual carriageways. Make use of traffic islands or central reservations to help you where appropriate. Rule 78. Full details about the correct procedure at roundabouts without cycle facilities are contained in Rules 184 to 190. Watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout, remembering that drivers may not easily see you. Rule 79. If you are turning right, you can ride in the left or right-hand lanes and move left when approaching your exit. Position yourself in the center of your lane if it is safe to do so, see Rule 72, and signal right to indicate that you are not leaving the roundabout. Alternatively, you may feel safer walking your cycle round on the pavement or a verge. If you decide to ride round keeping to the left-hand lane you should. Be aware that drivers may not easily see you. Take extra care when cycling across exits. You should signal right to show you are not leaving the roundabout. Watch out for vehicles crossing your path to leave or join the roundabout. Rule 80. Give plenty of room to long vehicles on the roundabout as they need more space to maneuver. Do not ride in the space they need to get round the roundabout. It may be safer to wait until they have cleared the roundabout. Rule 81. Do not ride across equestrian crossings, as they are for horse riders only. Do not ride across a pelican, puffin or zebra crossing. Dismount and wheel your cycle across. Rule 82. Crossings. Toucan crossings are light controlled crossings which allow cyclists and pedestrians to share crossing space and cross at the same time. They are push button operated. Pedestrians and cyclists will see the green signal together. Cyclists are permitted to ride across. Cycle tracks on opposite sides of the road may be linked by cycle only signaled crossings. You may ride across but you must not cross until the green cycle symbol is showing. Cycle track crossings can be in spacious pedestrian environments. Cyclists should look out and be prepared to stop for pedestrians crossing the track informally as well as at these designated points. Take extra care when crossing level crossings and tramways, see Rule 306. You should dismount at level crossings where a cyclist dismount sign is displayed. Rule 83. On all journeys, the rider and pillion passenger on a motorcycle, 
scooter or moped must wear a protective helmet. This does not apply to a follower of the Sikh religion while wearing a turban. Helmets must comply with the regulations and they must be fastened securely. Riders and passengers of motor tricycles and quadricycles, also called quad bikes, should also wear a protective helmet. Before each journey check that your helmet visor is clean and in good condition. Rule 84. It is also advisable to wear eye protectors, which must comply with the regulations. Scratched or poorly fitting eye protectors can limit your view when riding, particularly in bright sunshine and the hours of darkness. Consider wearing ear protection. Strong boots, gloves and suitable clothing may help to protect you if you are involved in a collision. Rule 85. You must not carry more than one pillion passenger who must sit astride the machine on a proper seat. They should face forward with both feet on the footrests. You must not carry a pillion passenger unless your motorcycle is designed to do so. Provisional license holders must not carry a pillion passenger. Rule 86. Daylight Riding. Make yourself as visible as possible from the side as well as the front and rear. You could wear a light or brightly colored helmet and fluorescent clothing or strips. Dipped headlights, even in good daylight, may also make you more conspicuous. However, be aware that other vehicle drivers may still not have seen you, or judge your distance or speed correctly, especially at junctions. Rule 87. Riding in the dark. Wear reflective clothing or strips to improve your visibility in the dark. These reflect light from the headlamps of other vehicles, making you visible from a longer distance. See Rules 113 to 116 for lighting requirements. Rule 88. Maneuvering. You should be aware of what is behind and to the sides before maneuvering. Look behind you, use mirrors if they are fitted. When in traffic cues look out for pedestrians crossing between vehicles and vehicles emerging from junctions or changing lanes. Position yourself so the drivers in front can see you in their mirrors. Additionally, when filtering in slow moving traffic, take care and keep your speed low. Remember, observation, signal, maneuver. Rule 89. Vehicle Condition. You must ensure your vehicle and trailer comply with the full requirements of the road vehicles, construction and use, regulations and road vehicles lighting regulations, see the road user and the law. Rule 90. Make sure that you are fit to drive. You must report to the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, DVLA, any health condition likely to affect your driving. Rule 91. Driving when you are tired greatly increases your risk of collision. To minimize this risk, make sure you are fit to drive. Do not begin a journey if you are tired. Get sufficient sleep before embarking on a long journey. Avoid undertaking long journeys between midnight and 6 a.m., when natural alertness is at a minimum. Plan your journey to take sufficient breaks. A minimum break of at least 15 minutes after every two hours of driving is recommended. If you feel sleepy, stop in a safe place. Do not stop in an emergency area or on a hard shoulder of a motorway. See Rule 262 for guidance on places to take a break when traveling on motorways. Rule 92. Vision. You must be able to read a vehicle number plate, in good daylight, from a distance of 20 meters, or 20.5 meters where the old style number plate is used. If you need to wear glasses, or contact lenses, to do this, you must wear them at all times while driving. The police have the power to require a driver to undertake an eyesight test. Rule 93. Slow down, and if necessary stop, if you are dazzled by bright sunlight. Rule 94. At night or in poor visibility, do not use tinted glasses, lenses or visors if they restrict your vision. Rule 95. Do not drink and drive as it will seriously affect your judgment and abilities. In England and Wales you must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 35 micrograms slash 100 milliliters of breath or a blood alcohol level of more than 80 milligrams slash 100 milliliters of blood. In Scotland the legal limits are lower. You must not drive with a breath alcohol level higher than 22 micrograms slash 100 milliliters of breath or a blood alcohol level of more than 50 milligrams slash 100 milliliters of blood. Alcohol will give a false sense of confidence. Reduce coordination and slow down reactions. Affect judgment of speed, distance and risk. Reduce your driving ability, even if you're below the legal limit. Take time to leave your body, you may be unfit to drive in the evening after drinking at lunchtime, or in the morning after drinking the previous evening. Rule 96. You must not drive under the influence of drugs or medicine. For medicines, check with your doctor or pharmacist and do not drive if you are advised that you may be impaired. You must not drive if you have illegal drugs or certain medicines in your blood above specified limits. 
It is highly dangerous so never take illegal drugs if you intend to drive, the effects are unpredictable, but can be even more severe than alcohol and result in fatal or serious road crashes. Illegal drugs have been specified at very low levels so even small amounts of use could be above the specified limits. The limits for certain medicines have been specified at higher levels, above the levels generally found in the blood of patients who have taken normal therapeutic doses. If you are found to have a concentration of a drug above its specified limit in your blood because you have been prescribed or legitimately supplied a particularly high dose of medicine, then you can raise a statutory medical defense, provided your driving was not impaired by the medicine you are taking. Rule 97. Before setting off, you must ensure that you have a valid license and insurance to drive the vehicle you intend to use, see Annex 3. Your vehicle is legal and roadworthy, see Annexes 3 and 6 for important vehicle maintenance and safety checks. Rule 98. Before towing, as a driver, you must not tow more than your license permits. If you passed your car driving test on or after January 1, 1997, you are restricted on the weight of trailer you can tow. You must ensure that both your vehicle and your trailer are in a roadworthy condition. This includes checking that all tires are legal, the trailer braking system is in full working order and all trailer lights are working correctly. You must not overload your vehicle or trailer. You should not tow a weight greater than that recommended by the manufacturer of your vehicle. You should distribute the weight in your caravan or trailer evenly with heavy items over the axles and ensure downward load on the tow ball. The manufacturer's recommended weight and tow ball load should not be exceeded. This should minimize the possibility of swerving or snaking and loss of control. You must secure your load and it must not stick out dangerously. Make sure any heavy or sharp objects and any animals are secured safely. If there is a collision, they might hit someone inside the vehicle and cause serious injury. If your vehicle is narrower than your trailer or load, or your trailer or load obstructs your rearward view, then towing mirrors must be used. Your trailer must be fitted with a secondary coupling device, such as a safety chain. Carrying a load or pulling a trailer may require you to adjust your headlights. Rule 99. You must wear a seat belt in cars, vans and other goods vehicles if one is fitted, see table below. Adults, and children aged 14 years and over, must use a seat belt or child restrained, wear fitted, when seated in minibuses, buses and coaches. Exemptions are allowed for the holders of medical exemption certificates and those making deliveries or collections in goods vehicles when traveling less than 50 meters, approx 162 feet. Rule 100. The driver must ensure that all children under 14 years of age in cars, vans and other goods vehicles wear seat belts or sit in an approved child restraint where required, see table above. If a child is under 1.35 meters, approx 4 feet 5 inches, tall, a baby seat, child seat. Booster seat or booster cushion must be used suitable for the child's weight and fitted to the manufacturer's instructions. Rule 101. A rear-facing baby seat must not be fitted into a seat protected by an active frontal airbag, as in a crash it can cause serious injury or death to the child. Rule 102. Children in cars, vans and other goods vehicles. Drivers who are carrying children in cars, vans and other goods vehicles should also ensure that. Children should get into the vehicle through the door nearest the curb. Child restraints are properly fitted to manufacturer's instructions. Children do not sit behind the rear seats in an estate car or hatchback, unless a special child seat has been fitted. The child safety door locks, where fitted, are used when children are in the vehicle. Children are kept under control. Rule 103. Signals warn and inform other road users, including pedestrians, see signals to other road users of your intended actions. You should always give clear signals in plenty of time, having checked it is not misleading to signal at that time. Use them to advise other road users before changing course or direction, stopping or moving off. Cancel them after use. Make sure your signals will not confuse others. If, for instance, you want to stop after a side road, do not signal until you are passing the road. If you signal earlier it may give the impression that you intend to turn into the road. Your brake lights will warn traffic behind you that you are slowing down. Use an arm signal to emphasize or reinforce your signal if necessary. Remember that signaling does not give you priority. Rule 104. You should also watch out for signals given by other road users and proceed only when you are satisfied that it is safe. Be aware that an indicator on another vehicle may not have been canceled. Rule 105. You must obey signals given by police officers, 
traffic officers, traffic wardens, see signals by authorized persons, and signs used by school crossing patrols. Rule 106. Police Stopping Procedures. If the police want to stop your vehicle they will, where possible, attract your attention by flashing blue lights, headlights or sounding their siren or horn, usually from behind. Directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. Rule 107. Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency officers have the power to stop vehicles on all roads, including motorways and trunk roads. They will attract your attention by flashing amber lights. Either from the front requesting you to follow them to a safe place to stop. Or from behind directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. Rule 108. Traffic officers have powers to stop vehicles on most motorways and some A-class roads, in England and Wales. If traffic officers in uniform want to stop your vehicle on safety grounds, for example an insecure load, they will, where possible, attract your attention by flashing amber lights, usually from behind, directing you to pull over to the side by pointing and or using the left indicator. Rule 109. Traffic Light Signals and Traffic Signs. You must obey all traffic light signals, see light signals controlling traffic, and traffic signs giving orders, including temporary signals and signs, see traffic signs. Make sure you know, understand and act on all other traffic and information signs and road markings, see traffic signs, road markings and vehicle markings. Rule 110. Flashing Headlights. Only flash your headlights to let other road users know that you are there. Do not flash your headlights to convey any other message or intimidate other road users. Rule 111. Never assume that flashing headlights is a signal inviting you to proceed. Use your own judgment and proceed carefully. Rule 112. The horn. Use only while your vehicle is moving and you need to warn other road users of your presence. Never sound your horn aggressively. You must not use your horn. While stationary on the road. When driving in a built-up area between the hours of 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. Rule 113. You must Ensure all side lights and rear registration plate lights are lit between sunset and sunrise. Use headlights at night, except on a road which has lit street lighting. These roads are generally restricted to a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, unless otherwise specified. Use headlights when visibility is seriously reduced. See Rule 226. Rule 114. You must not use any lights in a way which would dazzle or cause discomfort to other road users, including pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders. Use front or rear fog lights unless visibility is seriously reduced. You must switch them off when visibility improves to avoid dazzling other road users. See Rule 226. Rule 115. You should also use dip tan lights or dim dip if fitted, at night in built-up areas and in dull daytime weather, to ensure that you can be seen. Keep your headlights dipped when overtaking until you are level with the other vehicle and then change to main beam if necessary, unless this would dazzle oncoming road users. Slow down, and if necessary stop, if you are dazzled by oncoming headlights. Rule 116. Hazard Warning Lights. These may be used when your vehicle is stationary, to warn that it is temporarily obstructing traffic. Never use them as an excuse for dangerous or illegal parking. You must not use hazard warning lights while driving or being towed unless you are on a motorway or unrestricted dual carriageway and you need to warn drivers behind you of a hazard or obstruction ahead. Only use them for long enough to ensure that your warning has been observed. Rule 117. In normal circumstances, the safest way to brake is to do so early and lightly. Brake more firmly as you begin to stop. Ease the pressure off just before the vehicle comes to rest to avoid a jerky stop. Rule 118. In an emergency, brake immediately. Try to avoid braking so harshly that you lock your wheels. Locked wheels can lead to loss of control. Rule 119. Skids. Skidding is usually caused by the driver braking, accelerating or steering too harshly or driving too fast for the road conditions. If skidding occurs, Remove the cause by releasing the brake pedal fully or easing off the accelerator. Turn the steering wheel in the direction of the skid. For example, if the rear of the vehicle skids to the right, steer immediately to the right to recover. Rule 120. ABS. If your vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes, you should follow the advice given in the vehicle handbook. However, in the case of an emergency, apply the foot brake firmly. 
Do not release the pressure until the vehicle has slowed to the desired speed. The ABS should ensure that steering control will be retained, but do not assume that a vehicle with ABS will stop in a shorter distance. Rule 121. Brakes affected by water. If you have driven through deep water your brakes may be less effective. Test them at the first safe opportunity by pushing gently on the brake pedal to make sure that they work. If they are not fully effective, gently apply light pressure while driving slowly. This will help to dry them out. Rule 122. Coasting. This term describes a vehicle traveling in neutral or with the clutch pressed down. It can reduce driver control because Engine braking is eliminated. Vehicle speed downhill will increase quickly. Increased use of the foot brake can reduce its effectiveness. Steering response will be affected, particularly on bends and corners. It may be more difficult to select the appropriate gear when needed. Rule 123. The driver and the environment. You must not leave a parked vehicle unattended with the engine running or leave a vehicle engine running unnecessarily while that vehicle is stationary on a public road. Generally, if the vehicle is stationary and is likely to remain so for more than a couple of minutes, you should apply the parking brake and switch off the engine to reduce emissions and noise pollution. However it is permissible to leave the engine running if the vehicle is stationary in traffic or for diagnosing faults. Rule 124. You must not exceed the maximum speed limits for the road and for your vehicle. See the speed limits table. A speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, generally applies to all roads with street lights, excluding motorways, unless signs show otherwise. Rule 125. The speed limit is the absolute maximum and does not mean it is safe to drive at that speed irrespective of conditions. Unsafe speed increases the chances of causing a collision, or being unable to avoid one, as well as its severity. Inappropriate speeds are also intimidating. Deterring people from walking, cycling or riding horses. Driving at speeds too fast for the road and traffic conditions is dangerous. You should always reduce your speed when The road layout or condition presents hazards, such as bends. Sharing the road with pedestrians, particularly children, older adults or disabled people, cyclists and horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and motorcyclists. Weather conditions make it safer to do so. Driving at night as it is more difficult to see other road users. Rule 126. Download typical stopping distances, PDF, 124 kilobytes stopping distances. Drive at a speed that will allow you to stop well within the distance you can see to be clear. You should. Leave enough space between you and the vehicle in front so that you can pull up safely if it suddenly slows down or stops. The safe rule is never to get closer than the overall stopping distance, see typical stopping distances diagram. Allow at least a two-second gap between you and the vehicle in front on high-speed roads and in tunnels where visibility is reduced. The gap should be at least doubled on wet roads and up to 10 times greater on icy roads. Remember, large vehicles and motorcycles need a greater distance to stop. If driving a large vehicle in a tunnel, you should allow a four-second gap between you and the vehicle in front. Rule 127. A broken white line. This marks the center of the road. When this line lengthens and the gaps shorten, it means that there is a hazard ahead. Do not cross it unless you can see the road is clear and wish to overtake or turn off. Rule 128. Double white lines where the line nearest to you is broken. This means you may cross the lines to overtake if it is safe, provided you can complete the maneuver before reaching a solid white line on your side. White direction arrows on the road indicate that you need to get back onto your side of the road. Rule 129. Double white lines where the line nearest you is solid. This means you must not cross or straddle it unless it is safe and you need to enter adjoining premises or a side road. You may cross the line if necessary, provided the road is clear, to pass a stationary vehicle, or overtake a pedal cycle, horse or road maintenance vehicle, if they are traveling at 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, or less. Rule 130. Areas of white diagonal stripes or chevrons painted on the road. These are to separate traffic lanes or to protect traffic turning right. If the area is bordered by a broken white line, you should not enter the area unless it is necessary and you can see that it is safe to do so. If the area is marked with chevrons and bordered by solid white lines you must not enter it except in an emergency. Rule 131. Lane Dividers. These are short, broken white lines which are used on wide carriageways to divide them into lanes. You should keep between them. Rule 132. Reflective road studs may be used with white lines. White studs mark the lanes or the middle of the road. 
Red studs mark the left edge of the road. Amber studs mark the central reservation of a dual carriageway or motorway. Green studs mark the edge of the main carriageway at Labies and slip roads. Green slash yellow studs indicate temporary adjustments to lane layouts, for example where road works are taking place. Rule 133. If you need to change lane, first use your mirrors and if necessary take a quick sideways glance to make sure you will not force another road user to change course or speed. When it is safe to do so, signal to indicate your intentions to other road users and when clear, move over. Rule 134. You should follow the signs and road markings and get into the lane as directed. In congested road conditions do not change lanes unnecessarily. Merging in turn is recommended but only if safe and appropriate when vehicles are traveling at a very low speed, for example when approaching road works or a road traffic incident. It is not recommended at high speed. Rule 135. Where a single carriageway has three lanes and the road markings or signs do not give priority to traffic in either direction. Use the middle lane only for overtaking or turning right. Remember, you have no more right to use the middle lane than a driver coming from the opposite direction. Do not use the right-hand lane. Rule 136. Where a single carriageway has four or more lanes, use only the lanes that signs or markings indicate. Rule 137. On a two-lane dual carriageway you should stay in the left-hand lane. Use the right-hand lane for overtaking or turning right. After overtaking, move back to the left-hand lane when it is safe to do so. Rule 138. On a dual carriageway with three or more lanes, you may use the middle lanes or the right-hand lane to overtake but you should return to the middle lanes and then the left-hand lane when it is safe to do so. Rule 139. Climbing and crawler lanes. These are provided on some hills. Use this lane if you are driving a slow-moving vehicle or if there are vehicles behind you wishing to overtake. Be aware of the signs and road markings which indicate the lane is about to end. Rule 140. Cycle lanes and cycle tracks. Cycle lanes are shown by road markings and signs. You must not drive or park in a cycle lane marked by a solid white line during its times of operation. Do not drive or park in a cycle lane marked by a broken white line unless it is unavoidable. You must not park in any cycle lane whilst waiting restrictions apply. You should give way to any cyclists in a cycle lane, including when they are approaching from behind you. Do not cut across them when you are turning or when you are changing lane. See Rule H3. Be prepared to stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists before crossing the cycle lane. Cycle tracks are routes for cyclists that are physically protected or located away from motor traffic, other than where they cross side roads. Cycle tracks may be shared with pedestrians. You should give way to cyclists approaching or using the cycle track when you are turning into or out of a junction, see Rule H3. Be prepared to stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists before crossing the cycle track, which may be used by cyclists traveling in both directions. Bear in mind that cyclists are not obliged to use cycle lanes or cycle tracks. Rule 141. Bus lanes. These are shown by road markings and signs that indicate which, if any, other vehicles are permitted to use the bus lane. Unless otherwise indicated, you should not drive in a bus lane during its period of operation. You may enter a bus lane to stop, to load or unload where this is not prohibited. Rule 142. High occupancy vehicle lanes and other designated vehicle lanes. Lanes may be restricted for use by particular types of vehicle. These restrictions may apply some or all of the time. The operating times and vehicle types will be indicated on the accompanying traffic signs. You must not drive in such lanes during their times of operation unless signs indicate that your vehicle is permitted, see traffic signs. Vehicles permitted to use designated lanes may or may not include cycles, buses, taxis, licensed private hire vehicles, motorcycles, heavy goods vehicles, HGVs, and high occupancy vehicles, HOVs. Where HOV lanes are in operation, they must only be used by vehicles containing at least the minimum number of people indicated on the traffic signs. Any other vehicles, such as buses and motorcycles, as indicated on signs prior to the start of the lane, irrespective of the number of occupants. Rule 143. One-way streets. Traffic must travel in the direction indicated by signs. Buses and or cycles may have a contraflow lane. Choose the correct lane for your exit as soon as you can. Do not change lanes suddenly. Unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise, you should use the left-hand lane when going left the right-hand lane when going right. The most appropriate lane when going straight ahead. Remember, traffic could be passing on both sides. 
Rule 144. You must not drive dangerously. Drive without due care and attention. Drive without reasonable consideration for other road users. Rule 145. You must not drive on or over a pavement, footpath or bridleway except to gain lawful access to property, or in the case of an emergency. Rule 146. Adapt your driving to the appropriate type and condition of road you are on. In particular, do not treat speed limits as a target. It is often not appropriate or safe to drive at the maximum speed limit. Take the road and traffic conditions into account. Be prepared for unexpected or difficult situations, for example, the road being blocked beyond a blind bend. Be prepared to adjust your speed as a precaution. Where there are junctions, be prepared for road users emerging. In side roads and country lanes look out for unmarked junctions where nobody has priority. Be prepared to stop at traffic control systems, road works, pedestrian crossings or traffic lights as necessary. Try to anticipate what pedestrians and cyclists might do. If pedestrians, particularly children, are looking the other way, they may step out into the road without seeing you. Rule 147. Be considerate. Be careful of and considerate towards all types of road users, especially those requiring extra care. See Rule 204. You must not throw anything out of a vehicle, for example, food or food packaging, cigarette ends, cans, paper or carrier bags. This can endanger other road users, particularly motorcyclists and cyclists. Try to be understanding if other road users cause problems, they may be inexperienced or not know the area well. Be patient, remember that anyone can make a mistake. Do not allow yourself to become agitated or involved if someone is behaving badly on the road. This will only make the situation worse. Pull over, calm down and, when you feel relaxed, continue your journey. Slow down and hold back if a road user pulls out into your path at a junction. Allow them to get clear. Do not overreact by driving too close behind to intimidate them. Rule 148. Safe driving and riding needs concentration. Avoid distractions when driving or riding such as Loud music, this may mask other sounds. Trying to read maps. Starting or adjusting any music or radio. Arguing with your passengers or other road users. Eating and drinking. Smoking. Rule 149. You must exercise proper control of your vehicle at all times. You must not use a handheld mobile phone, or similar device, capable of interactive communication, such as a tablet, for any purpose when driving or when supervising a learner driver. This ban covers all use of a handheld interactive communication device and it applies even when the interactive communication capability is turned off or unavailable. You must not pick up the phone or similar device while driving to dial a number and then put it in the cradle for the duration of the conversation. You must not pick up and use your handheld phone or similar device while stationary in traffic. There is an exception to call 999 or 112 in a genuine emergency when it is unsafe or impractical to stop. There is also an exception if you are using a handheld mobile phone or similar device to make a contactless payment at a contactless payment terminal. Your vehicle must be stationary, and the goods or services must be received at the same time as, or after, the contactless payment. Never use a handheld microphone when driving. Using hands-free equipment is also likely to distract your attention from the road. It is far safer not to use any telephone or similar device while you are driving or riding. Find a safe place to stop first or use the voicemail facility and listen to messages later. You may park your vehicle using a handheld remote control app or device. The app or device must be legal, and you should not put other people in danger when you use it. Rule 150. There is a danger of driver distraction being caused by in-vehicle systems such as satellite navigation systems, congestion warning systems, PCs, multimedia, etc. You must exercise proper control of your vehicle at all times. Do not rely on driver assistance systems such as motorway assist, lane departure warnings, or remote control parking. They are available to assist but you should not reduce your concentration levels. Do not be distracted by maps or screen-based information, such as navigation or vehicle management systems, while driving or riding. If necessary find a safe place to stop. As the driver, you are still responsible for the vehicle if you use a driver assistance system, like motorway assist. This is also the case if you use a handheld remote control parking app or device. You must have full control over these systems at all times. Rule 151. In slow moving traffic, you should reduce the distance between you and the vehicle ahead to maintain traffic flow. Never get so close to the vehicle in front that you cannot stop safely. 
leave enough space to be able to maneuver if the vehicle in front breaks down or an emergency vehicle needs to get past. Not change lanes to the left to overtake. Allow access into and from side roads, as blocking these will add to congestion. Allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross in front of you. Be aware of cyclists and motorcyclists who may be passing on either side. Rule 152. Residential streets. You should drive slowly and carefully on streets where there are likely to be pedestrians, cyclists and parked cars. In some areas at 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, maximum speed limit may be in force. Look out for Vehicles emerging from junctions or driveways Vehicles moving off Car doors opening Pedestrians Children running out from between parked cars Cyclists and motorcyclists Rule 153 Traffic calming measures On some roads there are features such as road humps, chicanes and narrowings which are intended to slow you down. When you approach these features reduce your speed. Allow cyclists and motorcyclists room to pass through them. Maintain or reduce speed along the whole of the stretch of road within the calming measures. Give way to oncoming road users if directed to do so by signs. You should not overtake other moving road users while in these areas. Rule 154. Take extra care on country roads and reduce your speed at approaches to bends, which can be sharper than they appear, and at junctions and turnings, which may be partially hidden. Be prepared for pedestrians, horse riders cyclists, slow-moving farm vehicles or mud on the road surface. Make sure you can stop within the distance you can see to be clear. You should also reduce your speed where country roads enter villages. Rule 155. Single track roads. These are only wide enough for one vehicle. They may have special passing places. If you see a vehicle coming towards you, or the driver behind wants to overtake, pull into a passing place on your left, or wait opposite a passing place on your right. Give way to road users coming uphill whenever you can. If necessary, reverse until you reach a passing place to let the other vehicle pass. Slow down when passing pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders. Rule 156. Do not park in passing places. Rule 157. Certain motorized vehicles do not meet the construction and technical requirements for road vehicles and are generally not intended, not suitable and not legal for road, pavement, footpath cycle path or bridleway use. These include most types of miniature motorcycles, also called mini motos, and motorized scooters, also called go-peds, which are powered by electric or internal combustion engines. These types of vehicle must not be used on roads, pavements, footpaths or bridleways. Rule 158. Certain models of motorcycles, motor tricycles and quadricycles, also called quad bikes, are suitable only for off-road use and do not meet legal standards for use on roads. Vehicles that do not meet these standards must not be used on roads. They must not be used on pavements, footpaths, cycle paths or bridleways either. You must make sure that any motorcycle, motor tricycle, quadricycle or any other motor vehicle meets legal standards and is properly registered, taxed and insured before using it on the roads. Even when registered, taxed and insured for the road, vehicles must not be used on pavements. Rule 159. Before moving off you should Use all mirrors to check the road is clear. Look round to check the blind spots, the areas you are unable to see in the mirrors. Signal if necessary before moving out. Look round for a final check. Rule 160. Once moving you should Keep to the left, unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise. The exceptions are when you want to overtake. Turn right or pass parked vehicles or pedestrians in the road. Keep well to the left on right-hand bends. This will improve your view of the road and help avoid the risk of colliding with traffic approaching from the opposite direction. Drive or ride with both hands on the wheel or handlebars where possible. This will help you to remain in full control of the vehicle at all times. You may use driver assistance systems while you are driving. Make sure you use any system according to the manufacturer's instructions. Be aware of other road users, especially cycles and motorcycles who may be filtering through the traffic. These are more difficult to see than larger vehicles and their riders are particularly vulnerable. Give them plenty of room, especially if you are driving a long vehicle or towing a trailer. You should give way to cyclists when you are changing direction or lane, do not cut across them. Select a lower gear before you reach a long downhill slope. This will help to control your speed. When towing, Remember the extra length will affect overtaking and maneuvering. The extra weight will also affect the braking and acceleration. Rule 161. 
Mirrors. All mirrors should be used effectively throughout your journey. You should. Use your mirrors frequently so that you always know what is behind and to each side of you. Use them in good time before you signal or change direction or speed. Be aware that mirrors do not cover all areas and there will be blind spots. You will need to look round and check. Rule 162. Before overtaking you should make sure. The road is sufficiently clear ahead. Road users are not beginning to overtake you. There is a suitable gap in front of the road user you plan to overtake. Rule 163. Overtake only when it is safe and legal to do so. You should. Not get too close to the vehicle you intend to overtake. Use your mirrors, signal when it is safe to do so, take a quick sideways glance if necessary into the blind spot area and then start to move out. Not assume that you can simply follow a vehicle ahead which is overtaking, there may only be enough room for one vehicle. Move quickly past the vehicle you are overtaking, once you have started to overtake. Allow plenty of room. Move back to the left as soon as you can but do not cut in. Take extra care at night and in poor visibility when it is harder to judge speed and distance. Give way to oncoming vehicles before passing parked vehicles or other obstructions on your side of the road. Only overtake on the left if the vehicle in front is signaling to turn right, and there is room to do so. Stay in your lane if traffic is moving slowly in queues. If the queue on your right is moving more slowly than you are, you may pass on the left. Cyclists may pass slower moving or stationary traffic on their right or left and should proceed with caution as the driver may not be able to see you. Be careful about doing so, particularly on the approach to junctions, and especially when deciding whether it is safe to pass lorries or other large vehicles. Give motorcyclists, cyclists and horse riders in horse-drawn vehicles at least as much room as you would when overtaking a car. See rules 211 to 215. As a guide. Leave at least 1.5 meters when overtaking cyclists at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, and give them more space when overtaking at higher speeds. Pass horse riders in horse-drawn vehicles at speeds under 10 miles per hour and allow at least 2 meters of space. Allow at least 2 meters of space and keep to a low speed when passing a pedestrian who is walking in the road, for example, where there is no pavement take extra care and give more space when overtaking motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders horse-drawn vehicles and pedestrians in bad weather, including high winds, and at night. You should wait behind the motorcyclist, cyclist, horse rider, horse-drawn vehicle or pedestrian and not overtake if it is unsafe or not possible to meet these clearances. Leave at least 1.5 meters when overtaking cyclists at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, and give them more space when overtaking at higher speeds. Pass horse riders in horse-drawn vehicles at speeds under 10 miles per hour and allow at least 2 meters of space. Allow at least 2 meters of space and keep to a low speed when passing a pedestrian who is walking in the road, for example, where there is no pavement. Take extra care and give more space when overtaking motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and pedestrians in bad weather, including high winds, and at night. You should wait behind the motorcyclist, cyclist, horse rider horse-drawn vehicle or pedestrian and not overtake if it is unsafe or not possible to meet these clearances. Rule 164. Large vehicles. Overtaking these is more difficult. You should. Drop back. This will increase your ability to see ahead and should allow the driver of the large vehicle to see you in their mirrors. Getting too close to large vehicles, including agricultural vehicles such as a tractor with a trailer or other fixed equipment will obscure your view of the road ahead and there may be another slow moving vehicle in front. Make sure that you have enough room to complete your overtaking maneuver before committing yourself. It takes longer to pass a large vehicle. If in doubt do not overtake. Not assume you can follow a vehicle ahead which is overtaking a long vehicle. If a problem develops, they may abort overtaking and pull back in. Rule 165. You must not overtake. If you would have to cross or straddle double white lines with a solid line nearest to you, but see Rule 129. If you would have to enter an area designed to divide traffic, if it is surrounded by a solid white line. The nearest vehicle to a pedestrian crossing, especially when it has stopped to let pedestrians cross. If you would have to enter a lane reserved for buses, trams or cycles during its hours of operation. After a no overtaking sign and until you pass a sign cancelling the restriction. Rule 166. Do not overtake if there is any doubt, or where you cannot see far enough ahead to be sure it is safe. For example, when you are approaching a corner or bend, a hump bridge, the brow of a hill, 
Rule 167. Do not overtake where you might come into conflict with other road users. For example, approaching or at a road junction on either side of the road. Where the road narrows. When approaching a school crossing patrol. On the approach to crossing facilities. Where a vehicle ahead is slowing to stop for a pedestrian that is crossing from a pedestrian island, see Rule 165. Between the curb and a bus or tram when it is at a stop. Where traffic is queuing at junctions or road works. When you would force another road user to swerve or slow down. At a level crossing. When a road user is indicating right, even if you believe the signal should have been cancelled. Do not take a risk, wait for the signal to be cancelled. Stay behind if you are following a cyclist approaching a roundabout or junction, and you intend to turn left. Do not cut across cyclists going ahead, including those using cycle lanes and cycle tracks, see Rule H3. Stay behind if you are following a horse rider or horse-drawn vehicle approaching a roundabout or junction, and you intend to turn left. Do not cut across a horse rider or horse-drawn vehicle going ahead. When a tram is standing at a curbside tram stop and there is no clearly marked passing lane for other traffic. Rule 168. Being overtaken. If a driver is trying to overtake you, maintain a steady course and speed, slowing down if necessary to let the vehicle pass. Never obstruct drivers who wish to pass. Speeding up or driving unpredictably while someone is overtaking you is dangerous. Drop back to maintain a two-second gap if someone overtakes and pulls into the gap in front of you. Rule 169. Do not hold up a long queue of traffic especially if you are driving a large or slow-moving vehicle. Check your mirrors frequently, and if necessary, pull in where it is safe and let traffic pass. Rule 170. Take extra care at junctions. You should. Watch out for cyclists, motorcyclists and pedestrians including powered wheelchairs slash mobility scooter users as they are not always easy to see. Be aware that they may not have seen or heard you if you are approaching from behind. Give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which or from which you are turning. If they have started to cross they have priority, so give way, see Rule H2. Remain behind cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and motorcyclists at junctions even if they are waiting to turn and are positioned close to the curb. Watch out for long vehicles which may be turning at a junction ahead, they may have to use the whole width of the road to make the turn, see Rule 221. Watch out for horse riders who may take a different line on the road from that which you would expect. Not assume, when waiting at a junction, that a vehicle coming from the right and signaling left will actually turn. Wait and make sure. Look all around before emerging. Do not cross or join a road until there is a gap large enough for you to do so safely. Rule 171. You must stop behind the line at a junction with a stop sign and a solid white line across the road. Wait for a safe gap in the traffic before you move off. Rule 172. The approach to a junction may have a giveaway sign or a triangle marked on the road. You must give way to traffic on the main road when emerging from a junction with broken white lines across the road. Rule 173. Dual carriageways. When crossing or turning right, first assess whether the central reservation is deep enough to protect the full length of your vehicle. If it is, then you should treat each half of the carriageway as a separate road. Wait in the central reservation until there is a safe gap in the traffic on the second half of the road. If the central reservation is too shallow for the length of your vehicle, wait until you can cross both carriageways in one go. Rule 174. Box junctions. These have crisscross yellow lines painted on the road, see road markings. You must not enter the box until your exit road or lane is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait when you want to turn right, and are only stopped from doing so by oncoming traffic or by other vehicles waiting to turn right. At signaled roundabouts you must not enter the box unless you can cross over it completely without stopping. Rule 175. You must stop behind the white stop line across your side of the road unless the light is green. If the amber light appears you may go on only if you have already crossed the stop line or are so close to it that to stop might cause a collision. Rule 176. You must not move forward over the white line when the red light is showing. Only go forward when the traffic lights are green if there is room for you to clear the junction safely or you are taking up a position to turn right. If the traffic lights are not working, treat the situation as you would an unmarked junction and proceed with great care. Rule 177. Green filter arrow. This indicates a filter lane only. Do not enter that lane unless you want to go in the direction of the arrow. You may proceed in the direction of the green arrow when it, or the full green light shows. 
give other traffic, especially cyclists, time and room to move into the correct lane. Rule 178. Advanced stop lines. Some signal controlled junctions have advanced stop lines to allow cyclists to be positioned ahead of other traffic. Motorists, including motorcyclists, must stop at the first white line reached if the lights are amber or red and should avoid blocking the way or encroaching on the marked area at other times, for example if the junction ahead is blocked. If your vehicle has proceeded over the first white line at the time that the signal goes red, you should stop as soon as possible and must stop at the second white line. Allow cyclists, including any moving or waiting alongside you, enough time and space to move off when the green signal shows. Drivers of large vehicles should stop sufficiently far behind the first white line so that they can see the whole area where cyclists may be waiting, allowing for any blind spot in front of the vehicle. Rule 179. Well before you turn right you should. Use your mirrors to make sure you know the position and movement of traffic behind you. Give a right turn signal. Take up a position just left of the middle of the road or in the space marked for traffic turning right. Leave room for other vehicles to pass on the left if possible. Rule 180. Wait until there is a safe gap between you and any oncoming vehicle. Watch out for cyclists, motorcyclists, pedestrians and other road users. Check your mirrors and blind spot again to make sure you are not being overtaken, then make the turn. Do not cut the corner. Take great care when turning into a main road, you will need to watch for traffic in both directions and wait for a safe gap. Remember, mirrors, signal, maneuver. Rule 181. When turning right at crossroads where an oncoming vehicle is also turning right, there is a choice of two methods. Turn right side to right side, keep the other vehicle on your right and turn behind it. This is generally the safer method as you have a clear view of any approaching traffic when completing your turn. Left side to left side, turning in front of each other. This can block your view of oncoming vehicles, so take extra care. Cyclists and motorcyclists in particular may be hidden from your view. Road layout, markings or how the other vehicle is positioned can determine which course should be taken. Rule 182. Use your mirrors and give a left turn signal well before you turn left. Do not overtake just before you turn left and watch out for traffic coming up on your left before you make the turn, especially if driving a large vehicle. Cyclists, motorcyclists and other road users in particular may be hidden from your view. Rule 183. When turning. Keep as close to the left as is safe and practicable. Give way to any vehicles using a bus lane, cycle lane, cycle track or tramway from either direction, including when they are passing slow-moving or stationary vehicles on either side. Rule 184. On approaching a roundabout take notice and act on all the information available to you, including traffic signs, traffic lights and lane markings which direct you into the correct lane. You should. Use mirrors, signal, maneuver at all stages. Decide as early as possible which exit you need to take. Give an appropriate signal, see Rule 186, below. Time your signals so as not to confuse other road users. Get into the correct lane. Adjust your speed and position to fit in with traffic conditions. Be aware of the speed and position of all the road users around you. Rule 185. When reaching the roundabout you should. Give priority to traffic approaching from your right unless directed otherwise by signs, road markings or traffic lights. Check whether road markings allow you to enter the roundabout without giving way. If so, proceed, but still look to the right before joining. Watch out for all other road users already on the roundabout, be aware they may not be signaling correctly or at all. Look forward before moving off to make sure traffic in front has moved off. Rule 186. Signals in position. When taking the first exit to the left, unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. Signal left and approach in the left-hand lane. Keep to the left on the roundabout and continue signaling left to leave. Rule 187. In all cases watch out for and give plenty of room to pedestrians who may be crossing the approach and exit roads. Traffic crossing in front of you on the roundabout, especially vehicles intending to leave by the next exit. Traffic which may be straddling lanes or positioned incorrectly. Motorcyclists. Long vehicles, including those towing trailers. These might have to take a different course or straddle lanes either approaching or on the roundabout because of their length. Watch out for their signals. Rule 188. Mini roundabouts. Approach these in the same way as normal roundabouts. All vehicles must pass round the central markings except large vehicles which are physically incapable of doing so. Remember, 
there is less space to maneuver and less time to signal. Avoid making U-turns at many roundabouts. Beware of others doing this. Rule 189. At double mini roundabouts treat each roundabout separately and give way to traffic from the right. Rule 190. Multiple roundabouts. At some complex junctions, there may be a series of mini roundabouts at each intersection. Treat each mini roundabout separately and follow the normal rules. Rule 191. You must not park on a crossing or in the area covered by the zigzag lines. You must not overtake the moving vehicle nearest the crossing or the vehicle nearest the crossing which has stopped to give way to pedestrians. Rule 192. In slow moving and queuing traffic you should keep crossings completely clear, as blocking these makes it difficult and dangerous for pedestrians to cross. You should not enter a pedestrian crossing if you are unable to completely clear the crossing. Nor should you block advanced stop lines for cycles. Rule 193. You should take extra care where the view of either side of the crossing is blocked by queuing traffic or incorrectly parked vehicles. Pedestrians may be crossing between stationary vehicles. Rule 194. Allow pedestrians plenty of time to cross and do not harass them by revving your engine or edging forward. Rule 195. Zebra and parallel crossings. As you approach a zebra crossing, look out for pedestrians waiting to cross and be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. You should give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. You must give way when a pedestrian has moved onto a crossing. Allow more time for stopping on wet or icy roads. Do not wave, flash your lights or use your horn to invite pedestrians across, this could be dangerous if another vehicle is approaching. Be patient, do not sound your horn or rev your engine as this can be intimidating. Be aware of pedestrians approaching from the side of the crossing. Rule 196. Pelican crossings. These are signal controlled crossings where flashing amber follows the red stoplight. You must stop when the red light shows. When the amber light is flashing, you must give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. If the amber light is flashing and there are no pedestrians on the crossing, you may proceed with caution. Rule 197. Pelican crossings which go straight across the road are one crossing, even when there is a central island. You must wait for pedestrians who are crossing from the other side of the island. Rule 198. Give way to anyone still crossing after the signal for vehicles has changed to green. This advice applies to all crossings. Rule 199. Toucan, Puffin and Equestrian Crossings. These are similar to Pelican Crossings, but there is no flashing amber phase. The light sequence for traffic at these three crossings is the same as at traffic lights. If the signal controlled crossing is not working, proceed with extreme caution. Do not enter the crossing if you are unable to completely clear it, to avoid obstructing pedestrians, cyclists or horse riders. Rule 200. Choose an appropriate place to maneuver. If you need to turn your vehicle around, wait until you find a safe place. Try not to reverse or turn round in a busy road, find a quiet side road or drive round a block of side streets. Rule 201. Do not reverse from a side road into a main road. When using a driveway, reverse in and drive out if you can. Rule 202. Look carefully before you start reversing. You should. Use all your mirrors. Check the blind spot behind you, the part of the road you cannot see easily in the mirrors. Check there are no pedestrians, particularly children, cyclists, other road users or obstructions in the road behind you. Rule 203. You must not reverse your vehicle further than necessary. Rule 204. The road users most at risk from road traffic are pedestrians, in particular children, older adults and disabled people, cyclists, horse riders and motorcyclists. It is particularly important to be aware of children, older adults and disabled people, and learner and inexperienced drivers and riders. In any interaction between road users, those who can cause the greatest harm have the greatest responsibility to reduce the danger or threat they pose to others. Rule 205. There is a risk of pedestrians, especially children, stepping unexpectedly into the road. You should drive with the safety of children in mind at a speed suitable for the conditions. Rule 206. Drive carefully and slowly when in crowded shopping streets, home zones and quiet lanes, 
see Rule 218, or residential areas. Driving past bus and tram stops, pedestrians may emerge suddenly into the road. Passing parked vehicles, especially ice cream vans, children are more interested in ice cream than traffic and may run into the road unexpectedly. Needing to cross a pavement, cycle lane or cycle track, for example, to reach or leave a driveway or private access. Give way to pedestrians on the pavement and cyclists using a cycle lane or cycle track. Reversing into a side road, look all around the vehicle and give way to any pedestrians who may be crossing the road. Turning at road junctions, you should give way to pedestrians who are crossing or waiting to cross the road into which or from which you are turning. Going through road works or when passing roadside rescue and recovery vehicles, as there may be people working in or at the side of the road. The pavement is closed due to street repairs and pedestrians are directed to use the road. Approaching pedestrians on narrow rural roads without a footway or footpath. Always slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary, giving them plenty of room as you drive past. Approaching zebra and parallel crossings as you must give way to pedestrians and cyclists on the crossing, see Rule 195. Approaching pedestrians who have started to cross the road ahead of you. They have priority when crossing at a junction or side road so you should give way, see Rule H2. Rule 207. Particularly vulnerable pedestrians. These include Children and older pedestrians who may not be able to judge your speed and could step into the road in front of you. At 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour, your vehicle will probably kill any pedestrians it hits. At 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour, there is only a 1 in 20 chance of the pedestrian being killed. So kill your speed. Older pedestrians who may need more time to cross the road. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Do not hurry them by revving your engine or edging forward. People with disabilities. People with hearing impairments may not be aware of your vehicle approaching. Those with walking difficulties require more time. Blind or partially sighted people, who may be carrying a white cane using a guide dog. They may not be able to see you approaching. Deafblind people who may be carrying a white cane with a red band or using a dog with a red and white harness. They may not see or hear instructions or signals. Rule 208. Near schools. Drive slowly and be particularly aware of young cyclists and pedestrians. In some places, there may be a flashing amber signal below the school warning sign which tells you that there may be children crossing the road ahead. Drive very slowly until you are clear of the area. Rule 209. Drive carefully and slowly when passing a stationary bus showing a school bus sign as children may be getting on or off. Rule 210. You must stop when a school crossing patrol shows a stop for children sign, see signals by authorized persons and traffic signs. Rule 211. It is often difficult to see motorcyclists and cyclists, especially when they are waiting alongside you, coming up from behind, coming out of or moving off from junctions, at roundabouts, overtaking you or filtering through traffic. Always look out for them before you emerge from a junction, they could be approaching faster than you think. Do not turn at a junction if to do so would cause the cyclist going straight ahead to stop or swerve, just as you would do with a motor vehicle. When turning right across the line of slow moving or stationary traffic, look out for and give way to cyclists or motorcyclists on the inside of the traffic you are crossing. Be especially careful when moving off, turning, and when changing direction or lane. Be sure to check mirrors and blind spots carefully. Rule 212. Give motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and pedestrians walking in the road, for example, where there is no pavement. At least as much room as you would when overtaking a car, see rules 162 to 167. Drivers should take extra care and give more space when overtaking motorcyclists, cyclists, horse riders, horse-drawn vehicles and pedestrians in bad weather, including high winds, and at night. If the rider looks over their shoulder it could mean that they intend to pull out, turn right or change direction. Give them time and space to do so. Rule 213. On narrow sections of road, on quiet roads or streets, at road junctions and in slower moving traffic, cyclists may sometimes ride in the center of the lane, rather than towards the side of the road. It can be safer for groups of cyclists to ride two abreast in these situations. Allow them to do so for their own safety, to ensure they can see and be seen. Cyclists are also advised to ride at least a door's width or one meter from parked cars for their own safety. On narrow sections of road, horse riders may ride in the center of the lane. Allow them to do so for their own safety to ensure they can see and be seen. Motorcyclists, cyclists, 
Horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles may suddenly need to avoid uneven road surfaces and obstacles such as drain covers or oily, wet or icy patches on the road. Give them plenty of room and pay particular attention to any sudden change of direction they may have to make. Rule 214. Animals. When passing animals, drive slowly. Give them plenty of room and be ready to stop. Do not scare animals by sounding your horn, revving your engine or accelerating rapidly once you have passed them. Look out for animals being led, driven or ridden on the road and take extra care. Keep your speed down at bends and on narrow country roads. If a road is blocked by a herd of animals, stop and switch off your engine until they have left the road. Watch out for animals on unfenced roads. Rule 215. Horse Riders and Horse-Drawn Vehicles Be particularly careful of horse riders and horse-drawn vehicles especially when approaching, overtaking, passing or moving away. Always pass wide and slowly. When you see a horse on a road, you should slow down to a maximum of 10 miles per hour. Be patient, do not sound your horn or rev your engine. When safe to do so, pass wide and slow, allowing at least 2 meters of space. Feral or semi-feral ponies found in areas such as the New Forest, Exmoor and Dartmoor require the same consideration as ridden horses when approaching or passing. Horse riders are often children, so take extra care and remember riders may ride in double file when escorting a young or inexperienced horse or rider. Look out for horse riders and horse driver signals and heed a request to slow down or stop. Take great care and treat all horses as a potential hazard, they can be unpredictable, despite the efforts of their rider slash driver. Remember there are three brains at work when you pass a horse, the riders, the drivers and the horses. Do not forget horses are fly animals and can move incredibly quickly if startled. Rule 216. Older drivers. Their reactions may be slower than other drivers. Make allowance for this. Rule 217. Learners and inexperienced drivers. They may not be so skillful at anticipating and responding to events. Be particularly patient with learner drivers and young drivers. Drivers who have recently passed their test may display a new driver plate or sticker. See safety code for new drivers. Rule 218. Home zones and quiet lanes. These are places where people could be using the whole of the road for a range of activities such as children playing or for a community event. You should drive slowly and carefully and be prepared to stop to allow people extra time to make space for you to pass them in safety. Rule 219. Emergency and Incident Support Vehicles. You should look and listen for ambulances, fire engines, police, doctors or other emergency vehicles using flashing blue, red or green lights and sirens or flashing headlights, or traffic officer and incident support vehicles using flashing amber lights. When one approaches do not panic. Consider the route of such a vehicle and take appropriate action to let it pass, while complying with all traffic signs. If necessary, pull to the side of the road and stop, but try to avoid stopping before the brow of a hill, a bend or narrow section of road. Do not endanger yourself, other road users or pedestrians and avoid mounting the curb. Do not brake harshly on approach to a junction or roundabout, as a following vehicle may not have the same view as you. Rule 220. Powered Vehicles Used by Disabled People these small vehicles travel at a maximum speed of 8 miles per hour, 12 kilometers per hour. On a dual carriageway where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour, 80 kilometers per hour, they must have a flashing amber beacon. But on other roads you may not have that advance warning. See rules 36 to 46 inclusive. Rule 221. Large vehicles. These may need extra road space to turn or to deal with a hazard that you are not able to see. If you are following a large vehicle, such as a bus or articulated lorry, be aware that the driver may not be able to see you in the mirrors. Be prepared to stop and wait if it needs room or time to turn. Rule 222. Large vehicles can block your view. Your ability to see and to plan ahead will be improved if you pull back to increase your separation distance. Be patient, as larger vehicles are subject to lower speed limits than cars and motorcycles. Many large vehicles may be fitted with speed limiting devices which will restrict speed to 56 miles per hour, 90 kilometers per hour, even on a motorway. Rule 223. Buses, coaches and trams. Give priority to these vehicles when you can do so safely, especially when they signal to pull away from stops. Look out for people getting off a bus or tram and crossing the road. Rule 224. Electric vehicles. Be careful of electric vehicles such as milk floats and trams. Trams move quickly but silently and cannot steer to avoid you. Rule 225. Vehicles with flashing amber beacons. These warn of a slow-moving or stationary vehicle, 
such as a traffic officer vehicle, salt spreader, snowplow or recovery vehicle, or abnormal loads, so approach with caution. On unrestricted dual carriageways, motor vehicles first used on or after January 1, 1947 with a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, or less, such as tractors, must use a flashing amber beacon, also see Rule 220. Rule 226. You must use headlights when visibility is seriously reduced, generally when you cannot see for more than 100 meters, 328 feet. You may also use front or rear fog lights but you must switch them off when visibility improves, see Rule 236. Rule 227. Wet weather. In wet weather, stopping distances will be at least double those required for stopping on dry roads, see typical stopping distances. This is because your tires have less grip on the road. In wet weather. You should keep well back from the vehicle in front. This will increase your ability to see and plan ahead. If the steering becomes unresponsive, it probably means that water is preventing the tires from gripping the road. Ease off the accelerator and slow down gradually. The rain and spray from vehicles may make it difficult to see and be seen. Be aware of the dangers of spilt diesel that will make the surface very slippery. CNX6, Vehicle Maintenance, Safety and Security. Take extra care around pedestrians, cyclists, motorcyclists and horse riders. Rule 228. In winter check the local weather forecast for warnings of icy or snowy weather. Do not drive in these conditions unless your journey is essential. If it is, take great care and allow more time for your journey. Take an emergency kit of de-ice or an ice scraper, torch, warm clothing and boots, first aid kit, jump leads and a shovel, together with a warm drink and emergency food in case you get stuck or your vehicle breaks down. Rule 229. Before you set off. You must be able to see so clear all snow and ice from all your windows. You must ensure that lights are clean and number plates are clearly visible and legible. Make sure the mirrors are clear and the windows are demisted thoroughly. Remove all snow that might fall off into the path of other road users. Check your planned route is clear of delays and that no further snowfalls or severe weather are predicted. Rule 230. When driving in icy or snowy weather. Drive with care, even if the roads have been treated. Keep well back from the road user in front as stopping distances can be 10 times greater than on dry roads. Take care when overtaking vehicles spreading salt or other de-icer, particularly if you are riding a motorcycle or cycle. Watch out for snow plows which may throw out snow on either side. Do not overtake them unless the lane you intend to use has been cleared. Be prepared for the road conditions to change over relatively short distances. Listen to travel bulletins and take note of variable message signs that may provide information about weather road and traffic conditions ahead. Rule 231. Drive extremely carefully when the roads are icy. Avoid sudden actions as these could cause loss of control. You should. Drive at a slow speed and as high a gear as possible. Accelerate and brake very gently. Drive particularly slowly on bends where loss of control is more likely. Brake progressively on the straight before you reach a bend. Having slowed down, steer smoothly round the bend, avoiding sudden actions. Check your grip on the road surface when there is snow or ice by choosing a safe place to brake gently. If the steering feels unresponsive this may indicate ice and your vehicle losing its grip on the road. When traveling on ice, tires make virtually no noise. Rule 232. High-sided vehicles are most affected by windy weather, but strong gusts can also blow a car, cyclist, motorcyclist or horse rider off course. This can happen on open stretches of road exposed to strong crosswinds, or when passing bridges or gaps in hedges. Rule 233. In very windy weather your vehicle may be affected by turbulence created by large vehicles. Motorcyclists are particularly affected, so keep well back from them when they are overtaking a high-sided vehicle. Rule 234. Before entering fog check your mirrors then slow down. If fog is shown on a sign but the road is clear, be prepared for a bank of fog or drifting patchy fog ahead. Even if it seems to be clearing, you can suddenly find yourself in thick fog. Rule 235. When driving in fog you should. Use your lights as required, see Rule 226. Keep a safe distance behind the vehicle in front. Rear lights can give a false sense of security. Be able to pull up well within the distance you can see clearly. This is particularly important on motorways and dual carriageways, as vehicles are traveling faster. Use your windscreen wipers and demisters. Beware of other drivers not using headlights. 
not accelerate to get away from a vehicle which is too close behind you. Check your mirrors before you slow down. Then use your brakes so that your brake lights warn drivers behind you that you are slowing down. Stop in the correct position at a junction with limited visibility and listen for traffic. When you are sure it is safe to emerge, do so positively and do not hesitate in a position that puts you directly in the path of approaching vehicles. Rule 236. You must not use front or rear fog lights unless visibility is seriously reduced, see Rule 226, as they dazzle other road users and can obscure your brake lights. You must switch them off when visibility improves. Rule 237. Keep your vehicle well ventilated to avoid drowsiness. Be aware that the road surface may become soft or if it rains after a dry spell it may become slippery. These conditions could affect your steering and braking. If you are dazzled by bright sunlight, slow down and if necessary, stop. Rule 238. You must not wait or park on yellow lines during the times of operation shown on nearby time plates or zone entry signs if in a controlled parking zone. See traffic signs and road markings. Double yellow lines indicate a prohibition of waiting at any time even if there are no upright signs. You must not wait or park, or stop to set down and pick up passengers, on school entrance markings, see road markings, when upright signs indicate a prohibition of stopping. Rule 239. Use off-street parking areas, or bays marked out with white lines on the road as parking places, wherever possible. If you have to stop on the roadside, do not park facing against the traffic flow. Stop as close as you can to the side. Do not stop too close to a vehicle displaying a blue badge, remember, the occupant may need more room to get in or out. You must switch off the engine, headlights and fog lights. You must apply the handbrake before leaving the vehicle. You must ensure you do not hit anyone when you open your door. Check for cyclists or other traffic by looking all around and using your mirrors. Where you are able to do so, you should open the door using your hand on the opposite side to the door you are opening. For example, use your left hand to open a door on your right hand side. This will make you turn your head to look over your shoulder. You are then more likely to avoid causing injury to cyclists or motorcyclists passing you on the road, or to people on the pavement. It is safer for your passengers, especially children, to get out of the vehicle on the side next to the curb. Put all valuables out of sight and make sure your vehicle is secure. Lock your vehicle. Rule 240. You must not stop or park on the carriageway, an emergency area or a hard shoulder of a motorway except in an emergency, see rules 270 and 271. A pedestrian crossing, including the area marked by the zigzag lines, see rule 191. A clearway, see traffic signs. Taxi bays as indicated by upright signs and markings. An urban clearway within its hours of operation, except to pick up or set down passengers, see traffic signs. A road marked with double white lines, even when a broken white line is on your side of the road, except to pick up or set down passengers, or to load or unload goods. A tram or cycle lane during its period of operation. A cycle track. Red lines, in the case of specially designated red routes, unless otherwise indicated by signs. Any vehicle may enter a bus lane to stop, load or unload where this is not prohibited, see Rule 141. Rule 241. You must not park in parking spaces reserved for specific users, such as blue badge holders, residents or motorcycles, unless entitled to do so. Rule 242. You must not leave your vehicle or trailer in a dangerous position or where it causes any unnecessary obstruction of the road. Rule 243. Do not stop or park. Near a school entrance. Anywhere you would prevent access for emergency services. At or near a bus or tram stop or taxi rank. On the approach to a level crossing slash tramway crossing. Opposite or within 10 meters, 32 feet, of a junction, except in an authorized parking space. Near the brow of a hill or hump bridge. Opposite a traffic island or, if this would cause an obstruction, another parked vehicle. Where you would force other traffic to enter a tram lane. Where the curb has been lowered to help wheelchair users and powered mobility vehicles. In front of an entrance to a property. On a bend. Where you would obstruct cyclists' use of cycle facilities. Rule 244. You must not park partially or wholly on the pavement in London, and should not do so elsewhere unless signs permit it. Parking on the pavement can obstruct and seriously inconvenience pedestrians, people in wheelchairs or with visual impairments and people with prams or pushchairs. Rule 245. Controlled parking zones. 
The zone entry signs indicate the times when the waiting restrictions within the zone are in force. Parking may be allowed in some places at other times. Otherwise parking will be within separately signed and marked bays. Rule 246. Goods Vehicles. Vehicles with a maximum laden weight of over 7.5 tons, including any trailer, must not be parked on a verge, pavement or any land situated between carriageways, without police permission. The only exception is when parking is essential for loading and unloading, in which case the vehicle must not be left unattended. Rule 247. Loading and Unloading. Do not load or unload where there are yellow markings on the curb and upright signs advise restrictions are in place, see road markings. This may be permitted where parking is otherwise restricted. On red routes, specially marked and signed bays indicate where and when loading and unloading is permitted. Rule 248. You must not park on a road at night facing against the direction of the traffic flow unless in a recognized parking space. Rule 249. All vehicles must display parking lights when parked on a road or lay by on a road with a speed limit greater than 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour. Rule 250. Cars, goods vehicles not exceeding 2,500 kg laden weight, invalid carriages, motorcycles and pedal cycles may be parked without lights on a road, or lay by, with a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 km per hour, or less if they are at least 10 meters, 32 feet, away from any junction, close to the curb and facing in the direction of the traffic flow, in a recognized parking place or lay by. Rule 251. Parking in fog. It is especially dangerous to park on the road in fog. If it is unavoidable, leave your parking lights or side lights on. Rule 252. Parking on hills? If you park on a hill you should. Park close to the curb and apply the handbrake firmly. Select a forward gear and turn your steering wheel away from the curb when facing uphill. Select reverse gear and turn your steering wheel towards the curb when facing downhill. Use park if your car has an automatic gearbox. Rule 253. Prohibited vehicles. Motorways must not be used by pedestrians, holders of provisional motorcycle licenses, riders of motorcycles under 50 cc, 4 kilowatts, cyclists, horse riders, certain slow-moving vehicles and those carrying oversized loads, except by special permission, agricultural vehicles, and powered wheelchairs slash powered mobility scooters. See rules 36 to 46 inclusive. Provisional car license holders must not drive on the motorway unless they are accompanied by a DVSA approved driving instructor, ADI, and are driving a car displaying red L plates, or D plates in Wales, with dual controls. Rule 254. Traffic on motorways usually travels faster than on other roads, so you have less time to react. It is especially important to use your mirrors earlier and look much further ahead than you would on other roads. Rule 255. Signs and signals. See light signals controlling traffic, are used to warn you of hazards ahead. For example, there may be an incident, fog, a spillage or road workers on the carriageway which you may not immediately be able to see. Rule 256. A single sign or signal can display advice, restrictions and warnings for all lanes. Lane-specific signs and signals can display advice, restrictions and warnings that apply to individual lanes. Rule 257. Amber flashing lights. These signals warn of a hazard ahead. You should Reduce your speed Be prepared for the hazard Only increase your speed when you pass a signal that is not flashing, or a sign displaying a national speed limit or the word N, and you are sure it is safe to do so. Rule 258 Red flashing light signals and a red X on a sign identify a closed lane in which people, stopped vehicles or other hazards are present. You must follow the instructions on signs in advance of a closed lane to move safely to an open lane. Must not drive in a closed lane. A sign will inform you when the lane is no longer closed by displaying a speed limit or the word end. Rule 259. Joining the motorway. When you join the motorway you will normally approach it from a road on the left, a slip road, or from an adjoining motorway. You should give priority to traffic already on the motorway. Check the traffic on the motorway and match your speed to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. Not cross solid white lines that separate lanes or use the hard shoulder. Stay on the slip road if it continues as an extra lane on the motorway. Remain in the left-hand lane long enough to adjust to the speed of traffic before considering overtaking. Rule 260. When you can see well ahead and the road conditions are good, you should. 
drive at a steady cruising speed which you and your vehicle can handle safely and is within the speed limit, see Rule 124 in the Speed Limits Table. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front and increase the gap on wet or icy roads, or in fog, see Rules 126 and 235. Rule 261. You must not exceed. A speed limit displayed within a red circle on a sign. The maximum speed limit for the road and for your vehicle, see Rule 124. Rule 262. The monotony of driving on motorways and other high-speed roads can make you feel sleepy. To minimize the risk, follow the advice in Rule 91 about ensuring you are fit to drive and taking brakes. Service areas are located along motorways to allow you to take breaks and to obtain refreshments. Refreshment and rest facilities on the local road network may also be accessible from motorway exits. Rule 263. Unless directed to do so by a police or traffic officer, you must not reverse along any part of a motorway, including slip roads, hard shoulders and emergency areas. Cross the central reservation. Drive against the traffic flow. Rule 264. Keep in the left lane unless overtaking. If you are overtaking, you should return to the left lane when it is safe to do so. See also rules 267 and 268. Be aware of emergency services, traffic officers, recovery workers and other people or vehicles stopped on the hard shoulder or in an emergency area. If you are driving in the left lane, and it is safe to do so, you should move into the adjacent lane to create more space between your vehicle and the people and stopped vehicles. Rule 265. The right-hand lane of a motorway with three or more lanes must not be used, except in prescribed circumstances, if you are driving. Any vehicle drawing a trailer. A goods vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 3.5 tons but not exceeding 7.5 tons, which is required to be fitted with a speed limiter. A goods vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 7.5 tons. A passenger vehicle with a maximum laden weight exceeding 7.5 tons constructed or adapted to carry more than 8 seated passengers in addition to the driver. A passenger vehicle with a maximum laden weight not exceeding 7.5 tons which is constructed or adapted to carry more than 8 seated passengers in addition to the driver, which is required to be fitted with a speed limiter. Rule 266. Approaching a junction. Look well ahead for signals, signs and road markings. Direction signs may be placed over the road. If you need to, you should change lanes well ahead of a junction. At some junctions, a lane may lead directly off the road. Only get in that lane if you wish to go in the direction indicated by signs or road markings. Rule 267. Do not overtake unless you are sure it is safe and legal to do so. Overtake only on the right. You should. Check your mirrors. Take time to judge the speeds correctly. Make sure that the lane you will be joining is sufficiently clear ahead and behind. Take a quick sideways glance into the blind spot area to verify the position of a vehicle that may have disappeared from your view in the mirror. Remember that traffic may be coming up behind you very quickly. Check all your mirrors carefully. Look out for motorcyclists. When it is safe to do so, signal in plenty of time, then move out. Ensure you do not cut in on the vehicle you have overtaken. Be especially careful at night and in poor visibility when it is harder to judge speed and distance. Rule 268. Do not overtake on the left or move to a lane on your left to overtake. In congested conditions, where adjacent lanes of traffic are moving at similar speeds, traffic in left-hand lanes may sometimes be moving faster than traffic to the right. In these conditions you may keep up with the traffic in your lane even if this means passing traffic in the lane to your right. Do not weave in and out of lanes to overtake. Rule 269. Hard shoulder, where present. You must not use a hard shoulder except in an emergency or if directed to do so by the police, traffic officers or a traffic sign. Hard shoulder, were used as an extra lane. The hard shoulder is used as an extra lane on some motorways during periods of congestion. A red X or blank sign above the hard shoulder means that you must not use the hard shoulder except in an emergency. You can only use the hard shoulder as an extra lane when a speed limit is shown above the hard shoulder. Where the hard shoulder is being used as an extra lane, emergency areas are provided for use in an emergency, see Rule 270. Rule 270. Emergency areas are located along motorways with no hard shoulder or where the hard shoulder can be used as an extra lane, see Rule 269, and must only be used in an emergency. They are marked by blue signs with an orange SOS telephone symbol and may have orange surfacing. Rule 271. You must not stop on any carriageway, emergency area, hard shoulder, 
slip road, central reservation or verge except in an emergency, or when told to do so by the police, traffic officers, an emergency sign or by red flashing light signals. Do not stop on any part of a motorway to make or receive mobile telephone calls, except in an emergency. Rule 272. You must not pick up or set down anyone, or walk on a motorway, except in an emergency. Rule 273. Unless signs indicate that a lane leads directly off the motorway, you will normally leave the motorway by a slip road on your left. You should. Watch for the signs letting you know you are getting near your exit. Move into the left-hand lane well before reaching your exit. Signal left in good time and reduce your speed on the slip road as necessary. Rule 274. On leaving the motorway or using a link road between motorways, your speed may be higher than you realize, 50 miles per hour may feel like 30 miles per hour. Check your speedometer and adjust your speed accordingly. Some slip roads and link roads have sharp bends, so you will need to slow down. Rule 275. If you need to stop your vehicle in the event of a breakdown or incident, Try to stop in a place of relative safety. A place of relative safety is where you, your passengers and your vehicle are less likely to be at risk from moving traffic. The safest place to stop is a location which is designed for parking. On motorways and other high-speed roads, the safest place to stop is a service area. Other places of relative safety include Labies Emergency areas, see Rule 270 Hard shoulders, see Rule 269 Rule 276. If your vehicle breaks down, think first of all other road users and get your vehicle off the road if possible. Warn other traffic by using your hazard warning lights if your vehicle is causing an obstruction. Help other road users see you by wearing light-colored or fluorescent clothing in daylight and reflective clothing at night or in poor visibility. Put a warning triangle on the road at least 45 meters, 147 feet, behind your broken-down vehicle on the same side of the road or use other permitted warning devices if you have them. Always take great care when placing or retrieving them, but never use them on motorways. If possible, keep your side lights on if it is dark or visibility is poor. Do not stand, or let anybody else stand, between your vehicle and oncoming traffic. At night or in poor visibility do not stand where you will prevent other road users seeing your lights. Rule 277. If your vehicle develops a problem, Leave the carriageway at the next exit or pull into a service area if possible. See Rule 275 for places of relative safety. If you cannot, you should. Go left. Move into the left lane. Pull into an emergency area or onto a hard shoulder if you can. Stop as far to the left as possible, leaving space to exit your vehicle and with your wheels turn to the left. If you can, stop just beyond an emergency telephone. Switch your hazard warning lights on. If it's dark or visibility is poor, use side lights. Rule 278. To rejoin the carriageway after a breakdown from a hard shoulder, build up speed, indicate and watch for a safe gap in the traffic. Be aware that vehicles, obstructions or debris may be present on the hard shoulder. An emergency area, you must use the emergency telephone provided and follow the operator's advice for exiting the emergency area. A lane may need to be closed so that you can rejoin the carriageway safely. Rule 279. Disabled Drivers. If you have a disability that prevents you from following the above advice in Rules 277 and 278, you should. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Stay in your vehicle and keep your seat belt on. Call 999 immediately and ask for the police. Alternatively, press your SOS button if your vehicle has one and ask for the police. Rule 280. If anything falls from a vehicle onto a motorway or other high-speed road, do not remove the obstruction yourself. Stop in a place of relative safety, see Rule 275, and call the emergency services on 999. On other roads, you should only remove obstructions if it is safe to do so. Rule 281. Warning signs or flashing lights. If you see emergency or incident support vehicles displaying flashing lights in the distance, be aware there may be an incident ahead. See Rule 219. You should slow down and be prepared to move safely into another lane or stop. The emergency services, traffic officers and recovery workers may be required to work in the carriageway, for example, dealing with debris, collisions or conducting rolling roadblocks. You must follow any directions given by police or traffic officers as to whether you can safely pass the incident or obstruction. Rule 282. When passing the scene of an incident, remain alert for hazards, 
such as debris or slow-moving vehicles, and do not slow down unnecessarily, for example, if an incident is on the other side of a dual carriageway. You should focus on the road ahead when passing an incident because a lack of attention may cause a further incident, collision or congestion. See also Rule 283, below. Rule 283. If you are involved in an incident or collision or stop to give assistance. If possible, stop in a place of relative safety. See Rule 275. Use your hazard warning lights to warn other traffic. Put on high visibility clothing if you have it. Ask drivers to switch off their engines. Ask drivers and passengers to stop smoking. Contact the emergency services on 999 and provide full details of the incident location and any casualties. Use an emergency telephone, a mobile telephone, or press the SOS button if your vehicle has one. See Rule 277 on how to identify your location on a motorway or other high-speed road. Move uninjured people away from the vehicles to a place of relative safety. See Rule 275. Do not move injured people from their vehicles unless they are in immediate danger. Do not remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it is essential and you are trained to do so. Be prepared to give first aid. See Annex 7 and useful websites. Stay at the scene until the emergency services arrive. Be prepared to exchange details. See Rule 286. Rule 284. Vehicles carrying dangerous goods and packages will be marked with plain orange reflective plates. Road tankers and vehicles carrying tank containers of dangerous goods will have hazard warning plates. See vehicle markings. Rule 285. If an incident involves a vehicle containing dangerous goods, follow the advice in Rule 283 and, in particular, switch off engines and do not smoke. Keep well away from the vehicle and do not be tempted to try to rescue casualties as you yourself could become one. Call the emergency services and give as much information as possible about the labels and markings on the vehicle. Do not use a mobile phone close to a vehicle carrying flammable loads. Rule 286. If you are involved in a collision which causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property, you must stop. If possible, stop in a place of relative safety. See Rule 275. Give your own and the vehicle owner's name and address, and the registration number of the vehicle, to anyone having reasonable grounds for requiring them. If you do not give your name and address at the time of the collision, report it to the police as soon as reasonably practicable, and in any case within 24 hours. Rule 287. If another person is injured and you do not produce your insurance certificate at the time of the crash to a police officer or to anyone having reasonable grounds to request it, you must. Report it to the police as soon as possible and in any case within 24 hours. Produce your insurance certificate for the police within 7 days. Rule 288. When the road works ahead sign is displayed, take extra care and look for additional signs providing more specific instructions. Observe all signs, they are there for your safety and the safety of road workers. You must not exceed any temporary maximum speed limit. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. See Rule 126. Use your mirrors and get into the correct lane for your vehicle in good time and as signs direct. Do not switch lanes to overtake queuing traffic. Take extra care near cyclists and motorcyclists as they are vulnerable to skidding on grit, mud or other debris at road works. Where lanes are restricted due to road works, merge in turn, see Rule 134. Do not drive through an area marked off by traffic cones. Watch out for vehicles entering or leaving the works area. Where vehicles are traveling in the road and are displaying amber warning lights, leave extra space and expect them to slow or turn into a works area. Concentrate on the road ahead, not the road works. Bear in mind that the road ahead may be obstructed by the works or by slow moving or stationary traffic. Rule 289. Take special care on motorways and other high speed dual carriageways. Lanes may be closed to traffic and a lower speed limit may apply. Works vehicles may be used to close lanes or carriageways for repairs. Where large keep left or keep right signs are displayed on the back, you must move over and pass the works vehicle on the side indicated and not return to the closed lane until you can see it is safe to do so. Where a vehicle displays the sign convoy vehicle no overtaking, you must not pass the vehicle. A flashing light arrow or red X may also be used to make the works vehicle more visible from a distance and give earlier warning to drivers. Rule 290. Roadworks may contain features that require extra care. Narrow lanes. Lanes may be narrower than normal and will be marked by studs or temporary road markings. Keep a safe distance, see Rule 126, 
from the vehicle in front and makes sure you can clearly see the edges of the lane ahead. Contraflow systems. These mean that you may be traveling in a narrower lane than normal and with no permanent barrier between you and oncoming traffic. At the start and finish of contraflows, you should slow down and increase the distance to the vehicle in front because changes in the camber of the road may affect vehicle stability. Breakdown advice. If your vehicle breaks down and road works, follow rules 275, 277 and 278 but be aware that areas marked off by cones contain significant hazards. Where available, you should move your vehicle into a signed road works refuge location. Signs indicate where dedicated recovery services are provided. Rule 291. A level crossing is where road crosses a railway or a tramway line. Approach and cross it with care. Never drive onto a crossing until the road is clear on the other side and do not get too close to the car in front. Never stop or park on, or near, a crossing. Rule 292. Overhead electric lines. It is dangerous to touch overhead electric lines. You must obey the safe height warning road signs and you should not continue forward onto the railway if your vehicle touches any height barrier or bells. The clearance available is usually 5 meters, 16 feet 6 inches, but may be lower. Rule 293. Controlled crossings. Most crossings have traffic light signals with a steady amber light, twin flashing red stop lights, see light signals controlling traffic and traffic signs, and an audible alarm for pedestrians. They may have full, half or no barriers. You must always obey the flashing red stop lights. You must stop behind the white line across the road. Keep going if you have already crossed the white line when the amber light comes on. Do not reverse onto or over a controlled crossing. You must wait if a train goes by and the red lights continue to flash. This means another train will be passing soon. Only cross when the lights go off and barriers open. Never zigzag around half barriers, they lower automatically because a train is approaching. At crossings where there are no barriers, a train is approaching when the lights show. Rule 294. Railway telephones. If you are driving a large or slow moving vehicle, a long, low vehicle with a risk of grounding, or hurting animals, a train could arrive before you are clear of the crossing. You must obey any sign instructing you to use the railway telephone to obtain permission to cross. You must also telephone when clear of the crossing if requested to do so. Rule 295. Crossings without traffic lights. Vehicles should stop and wait at the barrier or gate when it begins to close and not cross until the barrier or gate opens. Rule 296. User-operated gates or barriers. Some crossings have stop signs and small red and green lights. You must not cross when the red light is showing. Only cross if the green light is on. If crossing with a vehicle, you should. Open the gates or barriers on both sides of the crossing. Check that the green light is still on and cross quickly. Close the gates or barriers when you are clear of the crossing. Rule 297. If there are no lights, follow the procedure in Rule 296. Stop, look both ways and listen before you cross. If there is a railway telephone, always use it to contact the signal operator to make sure it is safe to cross. Inform the signal operator again when you are clear of the crossing. Rule 298. Open crossings. These have no gates, barriers, attendant or traffic lights but will have a give way sign. You should look both ways, listen and make sure there is no train coming before you cross. Rule 299. Incidents and breakdowns. If your vehicle breaks down, or if you have an incident on a crossing you should. Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing immediately. Use a railway telephone if available to tell the signal operator. Follow the instructions you are given. Move the vehicle clear of the crossing if there is time before a train arrives. If the alarm sounds, or the amber light comes on, leave the vehicle and get clear of the crossing immediately. Rule 300. You must not enter a road, lane or other route reserved for trams. Take extra care where trams run along the road. You should.